Let's pray and then let's go to the Word. I just want to talk to you all this morning. I want, I'm on the back end. Today's the last day that we're going to be talking about this financial thing. So I want to share uh, some, serious, uh, some important information with you that I'm hoping that you grab onto that will begin the process of changing your life. Because uh, as you've been saying on the screen, the goal is I want for every member in this church to flourish financially. That's what we're really praying for. And so we want God to move and have his way. So I'm praying that you hear me. Amen? So do me a favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you to listen to pastor today. Yeah, tell the other neighbor. Say, other neighbor, I need you to listen to pastor today. Amen, 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 amen. I have some testimonials um, that I'll probably just show them on the screen. And when I say testimonials, I'm telling y'all major testimonials that will blow you out the water because it blow me, blew me out of the water when um, these individuals from our fellowship came and shared what God has done and been doing in their life as a result of the teaching and what they've been putting it into practice in their life over some time. So let's pray and then let's go to work. Lord, we thank you for you. Open our hearts to hear and receive um, what you're saying to us, God. Speak to your word. Um, speak through your word to us so we can be who you would have us to be. So we bless you, we praise you, and we thank you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Man, hey, security man, am I going to put you on the spot if I say this? Is it okay? He got married. Um, what was it? Um, yeah, you got married Friday. Yeah, so congratulations. Yeah, amen, congratulations. It's, uh, she's here, right? So come on, where's she at? Stand up, stand up, baby. You better be proud. Where you at? All right, good, good. Congratulations, yeah. Congratulations to you all. Amen. So good, good, good. Thank you, thank you. So he's off the market, ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So amen, yeah, yeah. He's off the market, yeah. All right, all is good. I know some of y'all been looking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> amen. Okay, so listen, uh, we've been talking uh, for a while about this whole story of Joseph, and I've been using Joseph to kind of paint a picture of stability and particularly what he was doing in the life of Pharaoh to kind of preserve Egypt. But here's how I want to begin today, and I want to share a couple of things with you. Most of you, I'm pretty sure all of us in here have heard stories of athletes that came out of my words, the hood, right? And these are my words that came out of an impoverished situation then they end up getting these huge mega million dollar contracts, right? And then at the end of their career, it doesn't take a year or so, a couple of years later, they find themselves as broke as they were when they first started. Come on, y'all. You've heard stories. You've, you've heard stories like that. We've all heard stories. Come on, say amen. We've all heard stories like that. And, um, and, and, and the reason I, put, I made that is because I wanted to follow up by saying this. A lot of us are hoping for that quick way out of our financial predicament with a large infusion of funds, right? And so here's what we do. We play the lottery. We go to Vegas. We do all kinds of things. And here's what we say. If I end up with this amount, that's going to fix all my problems. I bring bad news to you today because the bad news I bring is if you're not doing, if you haven't solved it by now, an infusion of money is not going to fix it for you. That's why I started out with the athlete. He had the same story. If I can make it to the NFL, if I can make it to the NBA, if I can make it to the major leagues, I'll be set for life. Then at the end of their career, notice what happens, right? So it's very, very important that we understand what the Bible is saying because here's the thing I want us to hear me say this morning. Our current financial situation is a reflection of what we have done with what we initially received. Say it again. Where you are right now is a reflection of what you did with what you had. If you did well with it, you're doing well. If you didn't do well with it, like the athlete. Does that make sense? Can we be honest this morning? That's why I need y'all listen to me, amen, because I want to turn some things around. I want us to get to where we need to go. So we've been talking about Joseph, and here's the story in the life of Joseph. I'm going to move quickly because Wednesday I'm going to pick this up, and then we're going to just wrap it up on Wednesday night. We see Joseph saying to Pharaoh, um, Pharaoh, if you do this, Egypt is going to be all right. 
And then we tell the story of Joseph about Joseph being in, in the pit and then going from the pit to the palace. But here's what I want you to understand about Joseph's scenario that you need not miss, that we need not miss, is that Joseph was not the product of an overnight success. Very, very important for you to not miss this, right? Because I'm one of those guys that will say to you and can show you biblically that if we follow Joseph's life carefully, you will notice that wherever Joseph found himself, he prospered. Come on. You'll hear that the narrative will put it this way. When he ended up being sold into Potiphar's house, here's what the text says. Even though he wasn't the man in charge, the text pointedly says that God prospered Potiphar because of Joseph. All right? And then he ends up in Pharaoh's house, and you see the same scenario again. God prospers Pharaoh because of Joseph, right? So I want you not to miss this. There was something that Joseph understood or something Joseph learned about life that it didn't matter where he was, he could turn his worst nightmare into a greatest blessing. And all he did was he carried that with him along his journey. Here he is in prison, and here's what the text says. God blesses the um, jail keeper, blesses the prison because of Joseph. Who ever heard of that? You're in prison, then the prison gets blessed because you got sent there. Amazing. And then he ends up to the text that we see today that the Lord now is about to bless um, Pharaoh because of Joseph. So if you want to know what's happening in Joseph's life, I want to share some principles with you in the book of Matthew that will hopefully lay a foundation. Just three simple things with some sub points that I want to communicate with you that if you can hear them, we will understand what God is going to do. So go with me to Matthew chapter 25. And we don't have time for much literary context, and there's so much we can work in this text, because if you've been here any length of time, we've dealt with this passage in great detail, but I just want to skim some things and make a few points um, to hopefully drive uh, the point home. This is not going to be a shouting message, but it could be a blessing message. Come on, y'all. But it takes discipline, right? It takes discipline. It takes discipline. We talked about Discipline Wednesday. So if we can put the first point on the screen, I want to move to this. And here's the first thing I want you all to understand about what I'm going to talk about. Number one, blessings are given on the basis of ability. Repeat after me. Say self. self. Blessings are given on the basis of ability. Very, very important for you to understand that. It's given on the basis of ability. Preacher, what are you talking about? Read with me. Let's read a couple of verses. And then Matthew chapter 25. And then jump down to verse 14. And let's talk about this. Say amen if you're there. It says, for it is, speaking about the kingdom of God, and if you've been reading the previous passages, it talks about the, the return of Christ or the parasu or God's return. And he uses this metaphor of a man going away on a long journey and coming back. So he picks the same theme up, Matthew picks the same theme up, and he says this, for it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. Watch this. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. And then my Bible says, and my translation, the ESV, each one according to his ability, then the man went on his journey. Let me read that again. It is like, or the kingdom of God is like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two, and to another one. And then repeat after me, say, each according to his ability. One more time, say, each according to his ability. Then he went away, okay? So here's what's going on, and, and, and I think this text is appropriate. We can have this debate or conversation subsequent to the message or Wednesday if you so choose, but what a lot of us have done over time is we read this parable and we've dumbed it down to restrict it to spiritual abilities. We've dumbed it down and restricted to the issues of spiritual gifts or spiritual, you know, abilities that God may have given us um, in, in the ministry. But I want to stay at, with the text at its face value and speak to it in the context in which the original author wrote it. Talents has everything to do with money in the day and age. Come on, y'all. 
So don't get nervous, don't get nervous. I want us to walk to it. And, and when you look at the text, the man in the text is God or Jesus himself, right? Then the servants could be equivalent to you and I, the people of God, that God now entrusts. And yes, we have talents, yes, we have abilities, but he has graced us all with a level of financial resources to work with. I want to stay there for the purpose of context so we can get to where we need to go. So it says here, this man now is about to take a far journey. He calls three of his servants, and he entrusted to them his ability. So go to the next slide as we kind of talk through this so you can see what's going, okay? Now, it's very, very important for you to understand that the money did not belong to the servants. It belonged to the man. Y'all ain't heard me yet. I'm going to do like Steve with praise and worship. I love it when he did this. Tell your neighbor you ain't heard him yet. <laughs> you have not heard me yet. You have not heard me yet. Because here's your attitude. It's my money. I can do whatever I want with it. I can spend it how I want with it. And we don't understand the truth that the money does not belong to us. It belongs to God. Well, last I text, Scripture still says the earth is who? The Lord's, the fullness, and the world, and come on, all that dwell therein. So the fullness of the world, everything we see in the earth realm, it just does not belong to us. It belongs to God. And look at the second thing. The servants then, all we are, are stewards of God's money. Is this making sense? Man, this changes things. Come on, doesn't it? Because here's what it looks like. God creates me. Well, let me, let me go in case you're all missing this. In, 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 in the book of Genesis, um, before God created man, the text says God planted a garden. And when you read the Genesis text, it says the rain had not fallen yet and there was no man yet to work the ground. So watch this. The garden was first, then God created man and placed man in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Whose garden was it? Wow. Imagine that. So everything Adam did in that garden was a product of what God expected him to do. All he was was simply a steward of God's garden. I'm hoping this makes sense to you. That, that's eye-opening for me because it, it, it teaches me and it helps me to understand that every cent I have, every dime I have, I am simply a manager of what God has entrusted me with. Oh, my gosh, that changes things. Come on, y'all. It's okay. It's okay. We can say amen. Look at the third thing, and this is important. This is very, very important. The distribution of money was made on the servants, and, and when you do the exegetical work on the text, you have to insert this word prior ability. You have to put that in there. Okay, let, let, let me just give you a little bit of historical cultural data. Don't, make, don't fool yourself into thinking that these were people that didn't know anything about money management. By virtue of the fact that if you do the, the calculation of the large sums of funds that were distributed to them, he gave them based on what he knew they would do with what he was about to give them. Let's read that again, y'all. I didn't get it yet. It says here, to one he gave five talents, he goes, verse 15, to another he gave two, and to another one. And then my translation, and it's not a parenthetic, each according to his or her ability. Okay? Very, very important that you not miss that because the distribution of funds was made that way. So listen to this. God has given each of us, I use the word earning capacity. Does that statement make sense? Come on, say earning capacity. Very, very important, very, very important, very important, very important. Some of you are broke because we don't know how to use our earning capacity. Or we don't know what our earning capacity is. True story. When I entered the engineering world and I left IBM to go to Sun Microsystem, by then I had learned my earning capacity. When I first came out of college, I didn't know what I was worth. So the first company got me cheap. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm starting to get, yeah. And so when I left IBM, I'd gotten a few raises and a few promotion. So I go to Sun Microsystem, and the reason they called me is because I had a unique skill. 
And uh, my manager put the offer on the table, and I just looked at it, and I looked at her. That's all. I didn't say nothing. Then she just said, okay, we can do a little more. And I looked at it, and I looked at her. I was communicating, I know what I'm worth. <laughs> you come on, come on, yo. The body of Christ don't know its earning capacity. Come on. So we keep selling ourselves cheap to the world. We've got to stop that, okay? He gave each a talent or ability based on their earning capacity because he knew who would sell themselves cheap and who would produce a return. By the time I got done negotiating without much talking, I thought it was fair. You kind of get what I'm saying? Okay? So he gives us freedom to develop our abilities to earn as much as possible in the earth. Now listen to this. Because I'm a steward, the capacity God gave me and the capacity God gave me, I am answerable to God for the use and development of my abilities. So God don't want to bless me just so I can bless myself. I'm answerable to him. You're going to see this in a little while, right? So I have to give account to him for what that is all about. So listen to this. The money, the amount of money each servant was given was based on the master's knowledge of the servant's ability to work with the master's money. Don't miss this. Okay? So listen to this. Y'all heard it. Y'all heard it a different way. This is how you've heard it before. Um, how's it say? It's something uh, faithful over, y'all know, right? Yeah, ruler over, yeah, you kind of get it. If you're not faithful with the few, quit praying for much. (laughs) Let me be honest this morning, right? Okay, don't miss that, don't miss. The master knew who to give much to and who to give, uh, who not to give much to. The master knew who would produce and who would not produce. The master knew who would succeed versus who would not succeed. So he gave money accordingly, okay? So he knew, he knew, the master knew, if I give this person this amount, it's going to be all about them, and they won't produce a return. So he didn't do that, okay? So here's the, sometimes God won't bless us with much because we can't handle the little we have now. Remember the famine? It's coming. It's coming. So with the seven years of plenty, we enjoy the heck out of it. And when the famine comes, we're ill-prepared. So listen to this. To get much, we must first prove faithful over little. If you can't manage ten bucks, don't expect a thousand. Come on, y'all. Let me, let me say it based on the context of what I've been saying. If you can't live on 80% of 10 bucks, don't expect that you'll live on 80% of 1,000. Very, very important. Um, he gave each one according to his ability. So here's what I believe how much of God's money we have now is the result of what we did with what he gave us in the first place. Okay? How much you have now is a reflection of what you did with what um, God gave us in the first place. Here's the last statement they're going to leave you alone. So our current bank account is a direct reflection of our ability to manage God's property. If the balance is zero, don't pray too hard. Just go to work. I'm going to tell you in a little while. We didn't do much. If it's hundreds, you're doing all right. If it's thousands, you're doing a great job. Each according to his, the servant's prior ability. So that word prior mean is that they were in the presence of the, ser- the master. The, the master watched them operate. The master looked at their return and he blessed based on how they operated. Let me go back to Joseph. I'm going to keep connecting the dot. Wherever Joseph went, the circumstance did not dictate how he operated. He understood some principles and he worked. Does this make sense? I just hate this job. I ain't doing nothing for them. Mm, I'm just going to come in, punch my clock, and punch out and go home. And God says, that's your earning capacity. (laughs) I put you there to bless them, but I can only bless them through you And if you want to avail yourself for me to work through you, don't expect me to bless you or them. Oh, my gosh. Let me move on. 
Second point. Go to the second one. Let's go to the second point on the screen. Here's the second one. To increase our blessings, here's what's happened. We are expected to work. We're expected to work. We're expected to work. Let me read. Let me read. Look at verse 16 to 18. We're not going to be long. Look at this. It says here, And he who had received the five talents, he went at once and traded with them, traded with them, and traded with them, and Yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it. He traded with them, and then he got five more talents. So also, he who had the two talents, he made two more. But he who had received the one talent, look at what he did. He went and dug in the ground, and he hid not his money, the master's money. Oh, my goodness, this is so, so critical that we not miss this, okay? So here's the thing. To increase our capacity, God expects us to go to work, right? Um, if you want to increase our earning capacity, it's very, very important that we work with God. Let me cover this subject because I am not an expert here, but I just want to make a, a simple point so y'all can get it. They got five talents, and notice what they did not do. They held the prayer meeting and started fasting and praying for growth. I'm being facetious, but I want y'all to hear me. They weren't walking around the altar talking, increase, 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 increase. I speak increase into existence. I call those things that be not as though they were. They didn't do that. They traded. I know y'all don't want to hear this because we're spiritual people. There's nothing wrong with praying. There is nothing wrong with fasting. There is nothing wrong with seeking God and all that stuff. But listen to me. If the garden was going to produce fruit for Adam, he had to work the ground. So the five guy, he probably prayed, Lord, I'm about to trade. But in my trading, I'm expecting a return. Then he traded. Oh. He didn't hang on to the five and says, increase it, Lord, multiply it while I hang on to it. And sometimes we do that too much. Okay? And, and here's all I'm going to say about trade because I'm not a financial expert. Get you a good investment portfolio. And it's not too late to begin. Let me go back to Pharaoh. Take 20%, okay, the one-fifth, and stick it in the bank. And at the end, if you do that for seven years, watch, you'll have enough food to feed not only Egypt, but the entire world in seven years. Come on, y'all. I remember this, uh, Elder Brennan, I see you over there. The first church you and I built, we had this thing called, was it stocks or, or some kind of bonds or something like that? And they asked people to, to buy bonds. And then you purchase bonds for a certain amount of money. And at the end of a certain amount of time, your money was returned. I was amazed that I bought bonds and I started to look like, dang, it's growing. But we don't get that. We don't get that as a people, as a culture, as a nation of people who love God. If you want to have a successful tomorrow, put some stuff away. Come on, I hope you all listening to me. Put some stuff. And, and don't make the mistake saying, I can't afford to. You can't afford not to. You kind of get what I'm saying. If you've got to skip the new Nikes when they come out so you can put that money away, skip the new Nikes. Are you hearing me? Come on, come, come on, y'all. Are you with me? If you've got to skip every lunch to put that lunch money away, do whatever you need to do to position yourself for a healthy tomorrow. Does this make sense? Very, very important. So they went to work. They went to work, and, and as they went to work, they produced an increase. I don't want to spend much time on that, but I want, this is where I want to land. And put the third one on the screen because I want you all to see this. Here's a very, very important thing. God expects, he expects that we give an account for our use of his resources. That's the part that we're never told. We just think, we're going to go to heaven and get a blessing, and it's going to be okay. There's accountability involved here. So notice what the text says. Look with me at verse 19. Look at verse 19, and then let's read, and then I'll explain this. In us. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made 
five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over what? Much. And he says, enter into the joy of your master. He who also, and he also said, who had received two talents, came forward saying, Master, two talents, um, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two more. Verse 23, his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24, he who also had received the one talent, he came forward saying, Master, watch this. I knew you are a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what's yours. But watch the master's response. I'm going to flesh this out. His master answered him, you wicked, slothful servant. You knew that I reaped where I had not sown and gathered where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was mine with interest. So take the talent from him. And give it to him who has ten. You see that principle? Take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given and he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away and cast the worthless servant into outer darkness in that place where it will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Here's what this sounds like in English and then I'll explain it. Go to the last slide. Here's what it sounds like in English. This is what we complain about. Rich people just keep getting richer. And poor people just getting poor. This is how we say it in English. Here's what the principle says. You don't do nothing with what you have. Those who have are going to take it from you. That's what the principle is. Notice, notice the one guy. You probably, the poor guy, all he had was one. Notice what the text did. God says, take it from him because he's not doing anything with it. And notice what he says, give it to the one who knows how to double. <laughs> the more I think about that, I'm like, dang, I get mad. Let me tell you why I get mad, because I wish I'd known this earlier, because everybody who took all my money. Because I was doing stupid things with it. Not them, I was. You kind of get what I'm saying? Anybody in here want to thank God for second chances? Oh, yeah, there it is right there, yeah, yeah. Second chances, because we get a chance to do it all over again, right? So notice the principles, right? Notice the servant's, um, the servant's response to his own inactivity. And let me flesh this out. He had a faulty perception of the master. Here's what he says. You reap where you haven't sown or gathered where you haven't scattered seeds. A faulty perception of who the master is. Look at the second one. His faulty perception resulted in fear of the master. He was afraid of the master. And all that is is that he didn't know how the master operated. He did not know that the master fully expected for him to be blessed by him working with the master, doing what the master did. Apparently, this guy was in the investment business, and he knew how to produce a return heard, and he had expectation that the servant did the same thing, and he wanted to bless the servant, so he gave him an opportunity to bless himself. The servant missed it. And then lastly, look at this. His fear resulted in inactivity. Church, that's been the majority of our problems. That's been the majority of our problems. Because we didn't know the master it caused inactivity in our lives. Come on, y'all. I grew up on an island, right? I grew up on St. Croix. Um, beach, coconut, you name it. We're not talking investments. So I was not raised in a culture where I was taught to, when you make X number of money, put some away for tomorrow. I wasn't taught like that. So I had a faulty perception of the master's expectation so the earlier part of my life was me blowing it in activity because I was living for the moment. How often can I get back to the beach? Come on, y'all. What's the fanciest car I can get now? What's the biggest size rims I can put on those things? My wife used to tease me a lot because I, when I see kids driving around with the boom, 
boom, I'm fussing at them. And she just looks at me crazy and she says, boy, that was you. <laughs> and hear me, wasting money on sound system. And she's like, boy, that was you. And when we used to ride around Reed Park in Tucson, boom, and thought we were cool after church, right? <laughs> Hey, do going around circles in the park. See who's going to be loud. Boom. Right? Inactivity because of a lack of knowledge. Inactivity because of a lack of knowledge. Put the last, uh, one more slide on the screen. Um, people back there, thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, keep going, keep going. Um, but let me, let me just say this. Back up one more, back up one more. The master, he, his response to the service responsibility, the master referred to him as being slacking with his um, assignment. The master regarded the servant's actions as inexcusable. There's no excuse for this. The master expected that, um, what's it, the servant take some risk with his, thank you for reading that for me. Amen. I'm getting younger. Hallelujah. Speaking against the glasses. Amen. Yeah. (laughs) He expects that we take risks. He expects that we take risks. Hey, Pharaoh, take 20%, put it in barns, and trust God to uphold his own principles. Right? And then look at the next one. And he says what? The master punished the servant for his lack of production. Did I get that word right? Yeah. It's always the last word. Punish for lack of production. Give me two seconds. Punish for lack of production. Punish for lack of production. Hey, Lord, bless me, bless me, bless me. I'm broke. Bless me, bless me, bless me. And the blessings aren't coming. This is my interpretation of the text. Punish for lack of production. So I could be praying for the blessing while I'm being inactive and God refuses to violate his own principle because he knows if he gives me a million dollars, the rich is going to take it from me again. Last slide. Last one. Next one. Yeah. Money moves from those who do not manage it to those who what? Yeah, very, very important. Put this by marketing slide on the screen. Here's what we're going to be doing in a couple of weeks. I mean, we don't, please don't go out there and register yet. Kim kind of yelled at me for putting this up there and saying that. Don't go register yet. I'm working with April to come up with some dates on when we can teach you again. Teach you afresh. Teach you again how to manage God's resources such that you can flourish financially. Amen? Amen. Hear me in that. And if you haven't been through the process, I want to encourage you, take the risk and do it. You'll be amazed at what God's going to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So here's, here's, I need you all to repeat. Say, never again. again. Say it again. Say, "Never never again. So here's what never again means. When you get paid, if it's this week or next week, take a portion of it and stick it in an account where you can't touch it, begin with growing that emergency fund. And ladies, don't get mad with me, right? An emergency fund is not used for, oh my gosh, how am I going to get my hair done this week? That's not an emergency, okay? You go in the mirror and figure it out. When you come to church and we like, girl, what happened? (laughs) We... All you got to do is say, I'm working on my emergency fund. That's all you got. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. But, but let's turn this thing around. Let's turn this thing around. Let's stop being a victim of, of our circumstances. Thank you so much for your patience as we've gone through this. I know it's not that emotional movie message, but I think it's very, very important that we understand what God is saying. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Bow your heads with me as the team comes and Pascatani come. Lord, we thank you for you, God. Living fiscally responsible, it's never easy. We don't know what it means to put you first, God. We need to get to that place where as a people, as a, a people of God, those made in the image of God, we should be the more financially sound on the face of the earth. But we miss that because we think church and worship is all about the spirituality and we don't understand the holistic approach. So teach us to spend it on paper before we even receive it. 
And God, as a church, we have people here that are able to help others turn it around as we walk with our congregation throughout the remainder of this year to be more fiscally responsible. I'm praying, God, that we make the adjustments. And when the enemy tempts us with that thing we always wanted, give us the discipline to say no. Give us the discipline to say no, God. My prayer for this congregation is that every member, God, be so blessed that your kingdom is not impacted. That every member, God, has the retirement account so they don't have to work for the rest of their life. That every member can buy whatever they want cash because they have the financial resources. That's my prayer for this congregation, God, that homes are being paid off. Credit cards are being cut up, God. Student loans are being paid back. God, call, I, my, that's my prayer for this congregation, that we be the healthiest group of people on the face of the earth. So, Holy Spirit, today is the beginning of a new day. We give this series to you that you get the glory. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand. Praise the Lord God. Amen.